that the second speech will be done by Peter, and the Peter's evaluator is Robert Meisenberg. Uh, but you can go ahead and read just from all from And And Leslie, do you want to do the um, evaluation of, of Peter? Um. What's your interest there? Uh, a go? I, I read it last night. So um, then you've got to head start, you know, where he's at and yeah. what he's looking for. Yeah. I need to sit closer if I'm going to do that. So it's Leslie now? Yeah. Oh, okay, you will do the evaluation of Peter. All right. Yeah. Uh, unless, uh, do you have the objectives? No, I don't think so, right? No, so I'll just read here. The, the title is A Party in Chicago, 1967. It's not uh, from any uh, speech manual. Uh, it's out of the manual. Objectives, I, I believe it's general, broadly. Um, right? To um, engage the audience. So please welcome Peter. In the fall of 1967, I was living in Chicago in the Hyde Park neighborhood, which includes the University of Chicago. <clears throat> At this time, the Vietnam War was heating up. Hyde Park is different from the rest of Chicago. It's the most liberal place by far. It's the only place it doesn't like that. Didn't like the, the mayor Richard J. Daley, and Richard J. Daley didn't like the neighborhood. So at this time, fall of 1967, uh, there were beginning huge protests in Washington, and the local peace groups in Chicago were planning to send 50 buses to uh, Chicago for the next big peace march. Now, one of the ways that they were raising money to pay for these buses was by giving parties. There was a party in a big Victorian house not too far from where I lived, walking distance. Uh, <coughs> and um, when you went, you would pay and admit, um, they would accept donations and that, that, that they were hoping to raise a whole lot of money. The uh, people in this party were uh, a combination of <coughs> graduate student types like myself, uh, <coughs> um, rich people associated with the University of Chicago, professionals, and local neighborhood teenagers who were attracted by the blues music, the food, the drink, and the dancing that were promised. There were about a hundred people in this large Victorian house. As a bonus, this was gave me since this was the first very cold night in the season. It's mid October. Gave me a chance to wear my new jacket, a beautiful suede bomber jacket, fleece line, and keep me warm on my way walking over there. So I came in, made my donation, went to a bedroom, tossed my beautiful jacket on the bed on a pile of other jackets and went to enjoy the party. Things were going great until about two hours later there was the sound of police sirens and there was a loud knocking on the front door. A, uh, somebody opened the door and there was a policeman demanding entrance. It seems that another officer had reported that he had looked into the basement window of this building 
and saw someone apparently selling alcohol to someone who appeared to be a minor. And the police were coming in so they could verify that this was indeed what was happening and arrest any of the people who were responsible. Well, as you might imagine, at an event like this, there were a lot of very smart liberal lawyers. So a standoff developed between the police officers and the lawyers right at the front door over whether the police were indeed allowed to come into this place and start arresting people. Everybody knew this was all about politics. The Democratic National Convention of 1968 was coming up, and this was daily shot over the bow. Say, uh, I'm going to be tough. Well, after a while, the police started forcing their way in, and there was a near riot. I noticed that there was a line of paddy wagons, uh, as far as I could see, in either direction. So it looked like what their goal was to try to arrest everybody. There was nearly a riot as the police started to force their way in. Lawyers went around and told people, sit down on the floor so you, you can't be charged with resisting arrest. And um, if they try to move you, just go limp. Anyway, finally, the, uh, the standoff continued. We were trapped in the house because we saw that when people try to go out, they'd be immediately arrested outside. So we were stuck for another hour or so until the police decided to leave. Finally, the cops left. I went to get my jacket, and it was gone. It was stolen. I had been victimized both by the cops and the robbers. <laughs> the next day, Mike Royko, the great Chicago columnist, wrote, wrote about this particular party. And he said sarcastically, isn't it nice to know that 30 Chicago policemen were spent in, um, uh, in cracking down on the heinous crime, the heinous crime of, um, uh, of selling um, booze to uh, someone who was underage, and they were able to um, uh, uh, rather than wasting their time on tracking down murders and rapes, of which there were several dozen that weekend. It looked like 1968 was going to be a long, hot summer, and it was. Thanks, Peter. Still a better outcome than what's happening to parties these days, I guess. The next is table topics, and that will be taken over by Chris Bassett on the topic he said self-acceptance is something I work on daily. I strive to be accepting my personal failures and weaknesses right alongside